Ready to go, the Jeff Hare Show, brought to you tonight by the good friends at Eastern Iowa News.com and Did You Hear That.com. You know, this time of year, I've always felt between Christmas and the Masters is the busiest time of the year for sports. This is when we uh, really we go through the college bowl season into the NFL playoffs with the Super Bowl. You have high school sports really going great guns all the way through their tournaments into the late February, early March. Uh, wrestling, both college and high school level, going right, going at it all the way through, uh, as I say, the Masters and the start of baseball season. This really is a busy time uh, for, for the sporting scene, and uh, we want to talk a little bit about it tonight. Our guest tonight is Brian Seguenza. Brian is a contributor to easterniowanews.com. Brian, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be in the uh, co-pilot seat with you on uh, this this flight tonight. Um, Talking a little bit about sports, Brian. Uh, what do you think is going on? What, just give me your overview of what you've been seeing so far. Well, you, you know, you know, you're right, Jeff. This this definitely is um, a very uh, interesting time of year. Obviously, we just uh, got out of the bowl season, which resulted in a great um, Orange Bowl win uh, for Iowa, and then uh, right now we're in uh, the NFL playoffs and. Um, you know, from from what I from what I believe, um, obviously that's going to be in Miami Gardens, Florida, uh, at at Dolphin Stadium, which is where the Orange Bowl was held. And I think there's going to be a Hawkeye alum in the Super Bowl, at least on the AFC side, uh, because with the New York Jets you have Sean Green. Um, let's see, who else do we have? We have Indianapolis with uh, Dallas Clark, and um, is is Sanders still hurt? Or no, he's on the IR. He's, he's on for the year. Well, we still have at least Dallas Clark, though. Uh, San Diego has Nate Kading um, mm-hmm. as kicker, and then the one team I'm leaving out, the Baltimore Ravens have Marshall Yonda uh, there. So we're, we're, we're going to have at least one Hawkeye uh, uh, in Miami for the Super Bowl. I remember years ago when I refereed Marshall Yonda. I'm a high school football official, and I had the opportunity to referee Marshall a few times. One thing right now that I have to say, the big t- topic now, obviously Iowa football has dominated everyone's thoughts for the last four or five months. The UNI basketball program, let's give them their dues. 14 straight wins. Last night, the Bradley Braves come to the McLeod Center and had a lot of people nervous, quite frankly. Uh, Two-point lead at halftime for Bradley. Uh, UNI then took the lead early on in the second half and held on. It was uh, kind of a nip-and-tuck game. UNI pretty much is in control in the second half, but when you're up by five or six and you got a team like Bradley that is capable of scoring it through a lot, that's scary in a lot of ways there. But really, we need to take our hat off right now to the Panthers. 14 uh, straight wins, 15-1 and one on the year. Who would have thought before the season started that these guys would be running away with things? 14 straight wins is a school record at UNI. I, and I, I sat back and I salute uh, Ben Jacobson through and through. One thing I've noticed at UNI over the years, and this goes back, uh, and, I, and I throw Mark Farley into this mix, going back to Greg McDermott and Terry Allen back uh, for a few years ago, they can recruit up there. They have an ch- opportunity to get players that not necessarily could play for Iowa or Iowa State or any of the biggies, but they come in, they're a little bit hungry, they're a little bit uh, mean in a lot of ways, uh, especially in football. Those guys in football are all over the field. Uh, they come up in basketball, they want to win, and they're, and they're out there playing their hearts out game in and game out. And I, and I salute Ben Jacobson. I salute where they're going to. And it's going to be fun watching this group the rest of the way. Well, yeah, you're ab- and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, the, these these are the guys that the uh, big schools, you know, Iowa and Iowa State, have overlooked. And you know, we we saw that in the football season, how you know these guys went down to Kinnick Stadium, and if not for two back-to-back blocked field goals, they uh, should have won that game. Yeah, Iowa probably wouldn't be in the Orange Bowl, and you know, yeah, yeah, you and I definitely should have won that game. So yeah, you know, you are right in that regards that. Well, what we need to, and this is where I think when you start looking at this, and yeah, we talk about the players that you and I get, it kind of that same theory kind of bites I think Todd Licklider in a lot of ways. Uh, the Iowa basketball program is is down this year. It's been down the last few years. Last Saturday, I was on press row at the Iowa Michigan State game, and I had an opportunity to talk to a Lansing beat reporter. And he came up, and sat down, wanted to ask a few questions, and he said, "What's going on here?" Uh, I gave him four theories. Now, understand and make no mistake, I will never use this forum to fire a coach. I don't believe that's what we need to do. I like Todd Licklider. He's a very nice man, very family man, very devoted to his job. If anyone's going to win, Todd Licklider's the man that's going to do it. So I want to make that, that point crystal clear at the first. I think there are four things, as I told the Lansing Beat reporter, that hurt this program more than any other. One, I think Steve Alford, when he was here, drove such a wedge such a division between 
the basketball program and the rest of the athletic program and the rest of the community at large that people just got to the point, the fans, the spectators, the people that would pay the $25 to go sit there are saying, you know what, we're not going to do this. We don't like basketball anymore. He did It, it was such a, a force that Steve obviously needed to move on. He's doing very well in New Mexico. I had an opportunity to umpire his kids over the years, referee his kids, and I, and I wish him very well. I never had a problem with him or his wife. But I think in the situation in Iowa, I think he really, really set the program back many, many years. I also think one thing that hurts basketball is a specter of Kurt Ferentz. Uh, this one thing that Lansing reporter brought up to me, he said, you know, the Lansing reporter said, you know, Jeff, I'm walking the, around the outer bowl in the perimeter of this place, and I'm talking to everyone who all they want to talk about is football. And I said, well, they're going to. I mean, that's all, that's all we're thinking about. We thought about nothing else in September. No other sports existed since September. This team has completely grabbed this state. Uh, I also think the Tom Bar- Brands has had an effect on the basketball program. The fact that Iowans are getting a shot in the arm with winning. Uh, Brands is going out winning anything under the sun. Anyone, any and all takers, Brands is taking them on. And I think Iowans who are really wanting to see something in the wintertime do. They, they turn to wrestling. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I think that's those are all factors. And, of course, the fourth factor I'll get into just a second. But uh, you think I, we're onto something here? You, you know, you very well could be. I think I think one thing that that you you left out here is you know the fact that uh, Tom Davis was sent was sent walking you know all those years ago in favor of somebody who would take that program to the next level and you know uh, everybody thought that Steve Alford uh, was that guy and uh, he turned out not to be. Well, as I as I said before, and I and I and I believe this to be true, we had a coach here in Iowa City who went out for years and won over twenty games, took us to the tournament every year. Uh, very competitive in every game. We were never blown out by anybody. Uh, shook hands with everybody. Did all the golf tournaments with everybody. Uh, was universally loved. Oh, yeah, we fired him. And we brought in uh, Steve Offord, who who set us back. In the state of Iowa, the high school talent, I'm not sure, is is big-time Division One level in terms of that. Now, take Harrison Barnes out of the equation, out of Ames High School, who is probably the, will be the greatest high school player ever in the state of Iowa. He's already signed with North Carolina. Uh, but take him out of the equation. For the most part, what we produce in this state are role players. Guys are going to go out like to, like uh, uh, Jason Bohannon, and I like Jason and his family a whole lot. He's doing great things at Wisconsin, super kid. He's the kind of guy that's going to score you 10 points a night I and mean, maybe get you five or six boards a night. What Iowa has to have, what we need to win in the Big Ten, is you need to be able to turn around to a guy who says, give me the basketball, I'm going to get you 25. And I'm not sure we see we have that. And it's going to go out consistently night in and night out, night out, and take the ball and say, I'm the man. We had it years ago with Andre Banks, Andre Woolridge, uh, and, of course, back further than that, which tells me that as we are want to progress with this program, we're going to start needing to recruit from outside. Which is not unusual in Iowa. Lou Olson went to Chicago and he brought in Ronnie Lester, Kenny Arnold, the Boyles, and won with those guys. Uh, you take a guy like uh, George Raveling for the reasons that people didn't like George, which I never understood because I like George. But the, uh, George Raveling went into Detroit and brought in B.J. Armstrong, Roy Marble, Bill Jones, uh, Kenyon Murray from Battle Creek. He had those all down, and those are the kind of, we won with those kind of players. Iowa right now, and we have it now for the past five or six years, we do not have those kind of athletes that are going to go up and down the floor and get us those kind of points, and who are going to sit there and say, hey, give me the ball, we're going to win tonight, and guess what, we'll see in March. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can kind of see that, but but at the same time, you know, I want you that you know there have been some pretty uh, good players um, out of the state who ended up in uh, in an out of state jersey, and uh, one, one of the best, Ray for Ray for France, Ray for France, um, and you know, you know, continuing with uh, the KU Jayhawks, mm-hmm. there, uh, you had Kirk Heinrich out of mm-hmm. Sioux City, he ended up in Lawrence, and then uh, Nick Collison also ended up there. This is the Jeff Hare Show.